Locomotive We believe that mobility through the urban landscape can improve through the decentralization of waste management services. In 2007, New York City launched Plan NYC, a strategic plan to improve city life by 2030. Among their 13 initiatives to improve solid waste management, none of them offer a roadmap for local solutions. We believe these initiatives can be improved. The 8.4 million people who live in New York City produce 7,500 tons of trash every day. 6,000 private and public vehicles drove over the whole city to pick up residential and commercial waste and transport it to landfills in other states. And even with Plan NYC, the truth is that garbage trucks are still the norm in New York. 68% of our trash is carried by waste hauling trucks, causing car jams and making mobility increasingly difficult for New Yorkers. To make matters worse, picture your waste traveling hundreds of miles to be dumped into a landfill. 720 miles to South Carolina, 530 miles to Ohio, and 410 miles to Virginia. That means that waste hauling is an even larger transportation issue. But we believe there is a faster path to cleaner streets and faster mobility. We believe we can do this by eliminating garbage trucks altogether. How might we manage to eliminate all garbage trucks from the city? We developed three pilot programs specifically revised from the 2007 Plan NYC Solid Waste Management Plan to find out if this was possible. Our pilots ran from 2015 to 2020 in select neighborhoods around the city. For our first project, we introduced vacuum tubes for local waste collection in the financial district and the Bronx. Exposed transparent tubes connected through the windows of buildings carry waste to and from building to building and then onto the final landfill. All the residents deposit their waste into the vacuum tube outlets in their buildings, eliminating the need for local waste disposal vehicles. There are a few opportunities that we can see arising from this venture. Local stylization can help neighborhoods differentiate themselves through the aesthetic choices of placement and materials used to build these tubes. And... Exposed tubes could be used to generate advertising revenue for the city or private businesses. Some of the unexpected issues that have developed include pest control and urban adventures. Since the tubes were introduced to our testing sites, rats haven't been able to find garbage to feed on in the streets. Because of this, they have emigrated to nearby neighborhoods. For these reasons, we have seen an increase in the pest control market. This will require a more robust residential pest management initiative. Another problem we have faced due to the tubes is related to adventurous New Yorkers that have taken to climbing on the tubes to write graffiti and post images to social media. Most of them are relatively young and are daring to walk on the tubes as a new sort of urban spot. We must increase our safety measures for this population, especially because not only could they harm themselves, but they're causing damages to the tubes and leading to leakages. In one of our test sites, we had to resort to providing umbrellas to citizens so that they could not be tainted by the garbage liquid. For our second pilot, we deployed a fleet of multi-use buses in Queens. Each bus was equipped with a compost system that works with organic waste. All a person has to do is haul their own waste into our personalized trash carriers created specially for this initiative. Once they get into the bus, they deposit their food waste in lieu of fare. This is then processed into compost and sold through existing compost markets in the city through the Lower East Side Ecology Center and the New York Restoration Project Community Gardens. One of the strongest opportunities so far for this pilot has emerged from the global market. Increasingly, our compost production is surpassing our need for it. 
around the world, farmers in cities implementing similar initiatives are starting to ask to trade compost with us. We believe this could be a source of great income for the city. But there have also been some challenges. The main one has been the so-called gentrification of compost that has been causing a protest around the city. As you might know, since compost is generated locally by the buses, it depends heavily on the types of food that are consumed by the citizens. What has happened is that some localities have access to better kinds of food and therefore have better compost that results in better crops from their community gardens. This is of course unfair and we must look into alternatives for this. For our third and most ambitious pilot, we installed waste incinerators on select subway lines throughout the city. This accelerates existing efforts to develop waste-to-energy conversion technologies, one of the 13 core projects of Plan NYC Solid Waste Management Plan. Instead of paying a fare, passengers may deposit their waste to be incinerated directly within the subway system. These technologies are extremely clean burning and have been converting waste to energy in Europe for over a decade. Riders are asked to carry their waste from home in approved containers which are equipped with data capturing technology. The waste is stored underneath the platforms and then pushed into the waste incineration car. The main opportunity with the subway incineration pilot is to eventually expand this to the whole city as a way to not only get rid of waste, but create energy from it. Engineers are optimistic about this idea and believe that with enough waste we could provide energy for small localities in the city. The principal issue with this pilot is scale, storage and quality control. With increasing subway fares, the incentive to deposit waste as fare is extremely attractive to riders. The number of incinerators required to meet this demand far exceeds the scale of this project. The space to store the waste is insufficient to meet this demand. And the material sorting capability is insufficient to ensure that the system operates without breaking down. Overall, the public response to our efforts have been highly encouraging. We are enthusiastically seeking out funding to revise and expand these programs in the hope that we might one day entirely eliminate trucks from the waste disposal system in New York City.